my name is John with Chess Freezer Cold Plunge, and I've got the awesome opportunity today to talk with Michael Garrett, who is the inventor and a co co owner of the Cold Plunge. So I'd love to just uh, have a conversation with Michael about his product and his company and uh, what he's bringing to this whole industry of cold water immersion and uh, how he's setting out to change it and the difference he's making. So, uh, Michael, welcome. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. Thanks for coming in. So um, so tell us a little bit about your background. What inspired you to get into cold training to start with? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I would say, you know, going all the way back to my main business is, is Reboot. So we started with float tanks and um, we had some really big press with Steph Curry early on and we wanted to expand and started looking into different modalities. So I was going to cryotherapy places and there met some really interesting stories. Some people with some amazing healing stories using cryotherapy. And so we ended up adding cryo to our new spas in the Bay area. And obviously I was doing cryo and quickly, you know, as anyone does, once you try it a few times, you get addicted, you kind of fall in love with it. You see all the benefits. Um, and then so now did you did you start the cryo from a particular health challenge or were you going at it just for like optimizing your already baseline good health? Yeah, I mean, for me, I didn't have any health challenges. It was more for the folks that, that do. And um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing about the cold. It's like if you have big health challenges, it's great. But if you're really healthy, it's amazing as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's right. Um, so yeah, I fell in love with it. And then was on a van road trip uh, going all the way up the Rockies and was just going in every single lake and river I could. And when I got home, I ended up buying a chest freezer. Um, and so that was my modality at home for at least two years was uh, every morning. Oh, wow. uh, either hot tub and, and cold plunge or sauna and cold plunge. Hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, this uh, basically when the quarantine started, we had to close our spas and uh, basically started looking into all the different options that were out there besides chest freezers and everything was really expensive, you know, 8K and up and right. it didn't kind of make sense to me. Um, so I flew to Arizona a couple times and me and my dad uh, started building prototypes and kept iterating, iterating and um, got to a point where we started selling them to a few reboot customers. And then, yeah, it's just been snowballing and the product's just super dialed at this point and um, really proud of the price. So we're at uh, 33990 right now. Um, we don't plan on raising it, um, which, you know, it's still a lot of money, but with financing, it's 139 a month. So right. you can put that to, you know, like a cryo membership or something. I mean, you're, you can get in this every day or twice a day um, pretty affordably. So the commercially available cold plunges start at $8,000 and they go up from there. So what was it that inspired you to make a product that was more affordable for, for people? I mean, just my passion for cold plunging and wanting to see other people get into it. And, you know, I had a chest freezer and um, what you know all about yeah. <laughs> uh, can provide cold water for you. And I had a little filter that stuck on the side to help move the water a little bit. But at some point you do have to drain it and that they don't make that easy. It's not made for water. Um, there's a safety element. Um, so there was just a lot that was left to be desired. Um, and I don't like doing a ton of water maintenance and I knew a lot about water maintenance and, and I actually built a float tank from scratch uh, before I even started reboot. So I had learned a lot about filtration and sanitation um, through owning, I mean, I own like four different manufacturers of float tanks. I've built them. Um, so I know all that stuff and it was just surprising, you know, that there's just not more filtration and sanitation on a lot of the units. Um, so it just kind of seemed like a no brainer. And I, I mean, during the pandemic, I just, I need to do stuff and I'm right. a builder and, uh, it was just totally, uh, aligned for me to do it. And, um, yeah, I went to Arizona and kind of, uh, we actually went and visited the Morozco folks, uh, super nice people. And they actually kind of sold my dad on the benefits of cold plunging. Mm. And so he was fired up just to heal his back and all that and he hates cold water so right. he was like the perfect person to see go down this journey of like getting over the fear and discomfort um you know he 
didn't want to get in. Oh my, you get in and like, oh my God, Mike, how do you do this? You're crazy. And then, you know, pretty soon after he, he just sit in there for five minutes and he'd get out and go, oh yeah, I feel amazing. You know, it's like that transformation with the endorphins and norepinephrine just like flowing through someone's system that just you get addicted to and you, you get it after you get over the hump of the. Right. The, and, and how is his back doing now? It's good. Yeah. He's, he's, he was going to the pool for a while and now he's going back into the, the prototype plunge that we built. So he's, he's still in it. It helps. So we still got the original model then. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a metal tub in his, in his airplane hangar. And oh, wow. uh, yeah, it's not exactly what we sell now, but uh, right. you guys have evolved that quite a bit, uh, which yeah. actually when the first time I saw your website, one of the things that stood out most for me was just the, the aesthetic that you have of this product. It's, it's a beautiful product. It's, it's got kind of a Zen, there's a simplicity to it and an elegance to it. So tell us more about your, a little bit about your design philosophy and, and what inspired totally. that and how it came together. Or how it evolved yeah i mean um it was the same philosophy that we went into building out our spas it was bright white colors really clean really modern uh, when you're getting into a body of water you just want to see you know a bright light shining in it so you can see oh this is clear when you see clear water you just are much more willing to get into it um and you know a lot of the units out there don't really pass what i call the wife test um because you got to ask the boss if you're going to buy this you know four thousand dollar piece of equipment and when they see a beautiful freestanding tub, it's a lot of times passes the test much more often. Right, that's awesome. Now you yeah. also mentioned something about water sanitation. One of the big uh, things that I still see people uh, expressing or, or declaring uh, is like, oh, well, bacteria doesn't grow in cold water. You don't need sanitation. So maybe you can speak to that a little bit because you guys have got, and then tell us a little bit more about why you, what sanitation you have in place and why that's important. Yeah, so there's a couple of like pillars of, you know, water, cleanliness and like if you look at a pond that's just sitting there it's going to be full of algae and really gross if you see a rushing river it's always really clean so same principle goes with this we move a ton of water so the, all the water is going through a filter every five minutes and there's two jets so we're creating a whirlpool effect which helps keep the water clean it's always moving and helps keep you cold actually because you're if you can imagine uh, plunging in a fast flowing river versus just a still body of water um, it's almost like a windshield. So it's pulling that uh, cold water over your skin constantly. So it's another topic to discuss, but right, right. Um, so we've got the water movement. We have a five micron filter um, pulling out any physical debris out of the water that you can easily change for five bucks. The new filter will just clean out the filter. And then there's ozone and UV, which we have on every plunge. So um, that combination with, uh, we asked people to put a pint of hydrogen peroxide in weekly. So that's just gonna create that combination of hydrogen peroxide, UV and ozone. It's the same thing in the float tank industry. Um, long story short, it just zaps the water of bacteria and viruses. Um, and so it's really low maintenance. Uh, anyone can just pour a pint of hydrogen peroxide in. That's kind of all you need to do to keep your water crystal clean, just keep the cover on it, um, super easy. All right, that gets pretty simple. Now, in the float industry, my understanding is that you use uh, hundreds of pounds of Epsom salts. Yes. And that, and that contributes to the water sanitation. That's part of it, along with yeah. the ozone and the UV. So Absolutely. why why did you not use Epsom salts in the plunge? Yeah, I mean, you can. You can definitely add, um, you know, uh, a couple pounds of Epsom salt. Um, so that's, that's just on the user's choice to do, totally. It's totally... Uh, a good idea. Um, typically, you're not in the plunge, you know, as long as you are in a float tank for it to really absorb. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely recommend throwing some Epsom salt in there too. Okay, cool. So this is something that uh, it won't damage the pipes or the body. You don't have to worry about corrosion. It's all ready to go. Don't don't make it a float tank. You know, don't don't put it in you know a thousand pounds or oh, 50 right. pounds, but a pound or two is totally safe. Okay, excellent. So that'd be more for like the spa therapeutic side of it. Yeah, totally. Or that that experience. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, so tell me a little bit more about uh, your company philosophy, because that was another thing that when I was looking at your website that uh, really stood apart from, you know, just a standard cold plunge or hot tub company that you would see advertising products on the site. It's not just buy our product. You guys have a, a philosophy that's really driving your business that, uh, that I found very appealing. So um, tell us a little bit more about that. Totally. Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, um, our company motto is all boats rise. And what that means is like a rising tide raises all ships. And so, you know, as the company grows and um, everyone who's involved with us, whether it's employees, 
whether it's you know um, uh, social media ambassadors or anyone like that, we want to create win-win relationships. So there's just this weird default uh, sometimes in our culture of like zero sum games and it's just uh, not needed, you know, like everyone can win. Um, so everything we do, we try to look at raising other people up and how can we just all help each other and become happier, healthier humans. Um, and then we have a whole set of uh, company values that we go by. Um, I just want to pull up here so I don't forget any. Um, but the values are reliability, uh, impeccable customer service, authenticity, transparency, affordability, innovative and, and elegant design, clarity in our messaging, and kind of most, uh, most importantly, integrity. So we, we try to live by those by with everything we do. Right. I love that. And uh, the, those are also values that I see just on the, on the side that I've tried to bring in and maybe not as consciously spelling them out in that way, but in helping people convert chest freezers you know, on that very low end of the model. But uh, again, what I've also found is that there's a lot of people who don't have the time or the inclination or the skill or uh, even the, uh, the level of enthusiasm to do the do it yourself model. And they're looking for something that can, hey, I just want it to be plug and play. So um, so yours is about as simple as it gets with that regard. So what can somebody expect when they order one of your, your, your cold plunges uh, as far as like the setup? What do they need to do to make that happen? And get it yeah, running? we are truly plug and play. So I highly recommend everyone go to the setup page, watch the three minute video of Ryan installing the plunge. I'm the inventor. Ryan is, is not a tech savvy or a handy guy at all. I'll tell you that first and foremost. And, uh, Three minutes is the video. We we skip filling it with water. That we skip that through, but it's literally set the chiller down, turn on these two unions, fill it up with water, plug it in, and you're rocking. Right. Uh, and I think the only tool you needed was a flathead screwdriver. Is that right? Nope. No, not, not even really. Needed. No, not even oh. needed anymore. Oh, wow. Yeah. No wow. tools at all. Um, and then even even uh, we we truly like believe in, in these values and making it easy for people we kind of pay extra for FedEx to do white glove service. So two guys come, they place it wherever you want it and take the chiller out, put it next to the tub and um, take away the pallet and all the uh, debris from the cardboard box and all that stuff. So literally it's, they'll put it where you want it and it, it couldn't be easier. Right, that's really awesome. Cause I know a lot of the times when uh, people buy something, they have the idea that you know, oh, it's, it's going to be hard or it's going to have to set things up. And uh, I like that you raised that bar to make sure that somebody just has an awesome experience from start to finish. And uh, and I also want to share that I got to experience a little bit of that. You know, uh, somebody in Austin where I live had called me uh, just asking about a chest freezer cold plunge conversion. And I went in there to talk to him. And, you know, that fellow had some health issues, like some serious health issues. And uh, he was looking for something to implement so he can get the benefits of cold water training. And just in the conversation of it, it became really clear that, uh, you know, he that your product was something that uh, would really best serve him. So, you know, we called you up, we got you on the phone and you know, had a, just a, a very great conversation. And uh, in the end, he ended up buying one of your products. Yeah, it was a really fun call, actually. Um, yeah, we've been texting and uh, I'm actually developing a new uh, sauna product based on the conversation we had, actually. Oh, very uh, cool. Infrared uh, light bulbs to supercharge your near your uh, far infrared sauna and other applications. So that's awesome. Uh, so speak a little bit about the contrast therapy and the benefits of that. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I do every morning. Um, it's, uh, to be honest, it's the easiest way to, to plunge is to get really hot first. Um, but you're getting that, uh, that effect of, uh, vasoconstriction and dilation with, uh, going into the heat, uh, increasing your heat shock proteins and then going into the water. This is something that the Nordic people have been doing for centuries. Um, and it's, it's my favorite way to plunge to do a, like a half hour sauna and, um, three or four minute plunge every morning. Excellent. So tell me, uh, who, who do you follow in terms of like cold plunging? Who are, who are your, the people that have inspired you or that uh, you look to for information? Yeah. I mean, obviously Wim Hof is, is the king. I've gone to some of his seminars and, um, learned some really cool things, uh, in terms of like the breath work. Um, uh, for instance, like when I get out, um, now I do a lot of like, uh, kind of breath of fire, um, exercises to heat myself up instead of just like 
putting on a big jacket and, and trying to warm up that way you want to heat your body up uh, kind of naturally with your own breaths so you're like <laughs> a lot of out breaths like that um i think xpt is one of the the leaders in the field for um, a lot of the science um and Rhonda patrick uh just gets into the nitty gritty of what's going on a lot of her stuff about norepinephrine is fascinating i mean you can 5x your norepinephrine levels if you're cold plunging regularly, even at 55 degrees. Right. Uh, so, so say. that's a great. That's actually a great conversation to talk about because uh, a lot of people will talk about well, how much time you should spend in, but they never talk about at what temperature. Yeah. So uh, maybe we, maybe you could talk a little bit about that inverse relationship between the time and the temperature and how that relates, really depending upon what purpose you're using it for, whether it's like athletic recovery versus if you're just going in for like the Wim Hof method and what those mm -hmm. differences are there. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, her studies are done at, uh, they're not her studies, but she cites right. all these studies are at uh, 55 degrees, I believe uh, to 60, I think. And so, yeah, they're getting all of these benefits at uh, pretty reasonable temperatures. If, uh, you know, 39, 40 is too intense for you, uh, that's, you just need 55, 60. Um, so it'd start there, obviously inverse relationship between, the time and your temp. So um, for me, I don't even, I actually don't even do timed plunges. I do, I count breaths, which uh, we always recommend just to take your, your mind off of, you know, nonsense. Uh, right. These excuses of why you should get out now instead of mm -hmm. just focusing on really calm, long breaths. Um, if you can do 30 nice calm breaths in there, you're having an awesome plunge. Um, last time, uh, you know, we talked before about uh, the low, more like 39 to 42 number that you were yes. talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the so the wind for for people that are watching this, like the Wim Hof method will specifically say 40 degrees or below. And the yeah. great thing about uh, the way you've set this thing up is that it will go down to 39. Right. So and keep the Wim Hof folks happy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it'll go to 39. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, what do you say to the folks that are that are saying, well, it needs to be colder than that? Is mm -hmm. there any is there any good reason to go colder than 39? I mean, unless you're trying to set world records or, you know, swim in the Arctic Circle. We have one lady who did that <laughs> recently. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you do. Uh, I, with the moving water, especially um, the plunge at 39 is going to give you kind of max benefit. Um, you know, some people uh, really want to see chunks of ice in there and they want to go to 32, 33. Um, you know, I'm not going to dissuade anyone from doing that, but we've yet to see any anybody get into a plunge at 39 and say, oh, this isn't cold enough. Um, right. it's, it's super cold. Right. It'll do the trick for sure. Right. Yeah. And there's there's kind of an interesting thing that, uh, that Tim Ferriss talks about, which is called the, the minimal effective dose. Like how cold does it really need to be? Or what is the minimum amount that you need to do to get a result? And that has to, that seems to have to do with like the warmer the temperature is, the more time you need to spend. And then it, the colder temperatures, you don't have to spend nearly as much time in to get that same benefit. And I think Dr. Rhonda Patrick also uh, addressed that in her paper. But there's also another piece around it of the diminishing return. So mm -hmm. if it's below 40 degrees, if you go much colder than that, you really don't need to. Uh, I think Tim, the Tim Ferriss uh, metaphor was like water is not more boiled at 213 than it is at 212. I like that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, at a certain point, you, you, you've gotten the, the cold shock response has happened, right? The, right. the body has had the response. Um, if you just sit in there uh, long enough, you're just going to get hypothermia, right? Uh, you're going to tax the body as you're in there. It is a stressor, right? So you want to have a balance between making sure you have the stressor, get that response, but not, you know, tax yourself and, and get sick or just, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it takes a lot of, you know, Sort of metabolism uh energy to like keep you warm which is great you know you burn a lot of calories when you plunge but you don't need to sit in there for even i don't even know uh, 10 minutes at 39 it seems a little excessive to me you know right right yeah i think in our culture we have uh and maybe this is true of other places but in particular in the us you know we seem to have this this idea of bigger better faster stronger push through it force and we're we're in this i think this evolving you know, mindset now to where that you don't have to do that necessarily to achieve the benefits. And there's something about mindfulness and being present and relaxing into what it is that you're doing. And, and the idea that, hey, self-care is, is a radically important concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's yeah, I think what I love and what suits me about the plunge is like, yeah, that that short dose is all you need, and you kind of have very few excuses for why you can't fit it into your day, right? right. Literally, you you have two minutes. Like you, your mind will constantly try to convince you that you don't have time today. Blah blah blah. You have time for a plunge. You right. always have time for a plunge. Right. And, and then for a product that sets it up to where you don't have to build anything or create anything or do a lot of uh, complicated maintenance, uh, you know, there's even, you know, that takes away all the other excuses as well. And it's affordable, you know, compared to those $10,000 models as well. Right. So, so tell me a little bit about the different places where it'll work. Uh, you guys are in California and you've tested it there, but you have two different versions of your, of the gold, of the plunge. So tell us about that and where each one of those would be more suitable. Yeah, I mean, we're in Sacramento, so it gets 100 degrees here in the summer. Um, if you can at least shade your plunge, it just helps a lot, right? Um, and, you know, the regular plunge is will work in almost all environments. So on the really cold end, you're in the mountains of Colorado, we do have a version with a heating element. So it's not a hot tub. Uh, it just heats it up to, let's say you want to plunge at 50 and it's zero degrees outside. It'll heat it up to 50. It'll keep it from you know, freezing if it's negative 10 uh, overnight and all that. Um, so the heating elements for those environments, those are available on our Plunge and Plunge Pro. The Pro model is uh, basically 10,000 BTUs. So it's three times the cooling power. So it, it will cool eight to 10 degrees an hour, which is pretty, pretty dang fast. Um, <laughs> so if you're uh, a facility that has people constantly going in, like, um, like an optimize in Arizona, they, they have an open concept where they have saunas all around and multiple cold tubs and people are just like literally constantly getting in. You want to get the plunge pro. Um, or if you are a hardcore Wim Hofer and you need 39, if it's 42, you're pissed right. and you're in Arizona <laughs> or Texas and you're putting it outside in 110 degree heat, you're going to want the plunge pro. But for most people, um, we, we don't try to like upsell everybody into the pro. Um, it's a badass unit. If you uh, if you need that power, go for that pro. But our standard unit um, kicks ass pretty much everywhere. Right, and the and the, the price differential is their price difference is not really that much, either. Yeah. which was impressive. Four uh, yeah, K basically for the regular, and then just another another grand for the pro. Right. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So where where do you guys where can you ship these products? If you have people that are going, ooh, I want one of these, but I'm in some other country, what what happens? Well, yeah, just reach out um, to us and we'll give you a shipping quote internationally. Um, lower 48, the shipping's 350 with that white glove service. Um, Hawaii, uh, we have a 450 right now, uh, flat rate. And then internationally, we'll just get a quote um, and figure that out for you, depending on where you are. It varies a lot, um, but a lot of the quotes really aren't too bad. Um, yeah, and again, if you're comparing you know, our unit plus shipping to wherever you are internationally compared to a lot of the other models you're still paying a lot less right and uh, talk about the voltage by the way uh, or the electrical issue is there any concern in different countries with having to buy step down converters or anything like that yeah yeah so you buy a step down converter um the plunge only sucks about five amps um so a uh i believe a thousand watt uh step down converter works for you they're not very expensive um so you can just buy one of those and then it'll work in any 220 environment Excellent. Excellent. And so uh, for, for anybody that's wanting to get one of these, uh, uh, or before I jump into that, I would like to say, is there anything else that you wanted to add or share about your product or your business or your company or anything else that people might find interesting? Good question. Um, you've touched on a lot of the, uh, a lot of the good questions. Um, yeah, nothing's coming to mind right now. Um, Okay, well, so here's a, here's a question. So one one of the big things about uh, the chest freezer is the insulation on that. And they've got these big, giant, thick walls. And so you have this very beautiful, elegant tub uh, yeah. that's that's not insulated. So actually, I would like to ask a couple of questions about the tub. So um, with the setup that you have, why is that insulation not necessary? Oh, we. I mean, I can show you right now. So this is uh, underneath the tub. So your Ooh. tub. Is uh, full of insulation. Nice. And then even uh, even the pipes on the outside were wrapping with uh, pretty thick um, insulation wrap. Excellent. So, so it is insulated. Oh yeah, it's yeah. it's all insulated. I mean, it only makes sense just to make it all more efficient. So right. yeah. The but full, then, 
And then your cool, your your cooling process is also different from a chest freezer. So you guys are using a heat pump versus you know the compressor with the coils, and that's a that's a very uh, different process. Like the chest freezer is wrapped like a basic freezer or refrigerator has all those little evaporator and condenser right. coils in there, and a heat pump is a completely different technology that's more effective, well, I think, than the. Yeah, I would say uh, what's great about our setup is that you know, someone could see it as a negative, but it's actually a positive is having the chiller separate from the tub allows you to, you know, uh, basically hot swap that unit uh, and access it and do maintenance on it if needed. Um, so as opposed to like, for instance, like a Morosco unit, they're running copper wires underneath the metal tub. And so uh, I have no idea how they would do maintenance on a tub like that. Um, whereas with this unit, um, you are uh, you can totally access it and, and get in there and, and and do any kind of maintenance you need, whether it's to swap out a compressor or um, or just completely swap out the uh, the whole chiller unit. Right. So everything's very modular. It can be easily complete replaced with the components. Um, now, now, also in terms of just cleaning and maintenance, which is the other thing I wanted to ask you about your tub. Uh, tell me about the what that material is made of in there. So everybody yes. will know. Uh, the tub is uh, all acrylic. Um, and then they reinforce underneath with fiberglass. So the surface you see is acrylic, which is a really hard um, material and it's gonna last, you know, basically a lifetime. Um, it's kind of ideal. Like for instance, float tanks uh, often use fully fiberglass and you'll get a lot of ours are bubbling because they're five, six, seven, eight years old. Um, and then if you saw earlier, there's like a metal uh, aluminum uh, sort of frame underneath. So it's really uh, secure and has uh, six legs that it sits on that are adjustable. Um, so yeah, this, the tub is super high quality and it's gonna last a really long time. That's awesome. Now my understanding also about uh, acrylic versus fiberglass is that acrylic isn't porous and so it's easier to clean. Is that is that right? Oh, it's super easy to clean. Absolutely. We Our favorite thing to use, um, if you ever like scuff it, kid runs your bike wheel into it or something crazy like we use a goof off commercial and it'll get like anything off of it it's it's amazing oh that's awesome that's yeah. awesome so uh so we've got so any other thing anything else that you'd like to add uh about the plunge or your business before we wrap totally, up? yeah i mean um we love uh getting phone calls if you guys want to you know reach out to us and just talk to me or ryan uh you know we're at our shop monday through friday uh, about 10 to 5 pacific uh, our number is 916 seven five eight sixty nine twenty um email us info at the and then um you have a discount code yes, to get people uh, yes. uh, for anybody who calls in or emails uh you know michael has set up the discount code richter r-i-c-h-t-e-r -E and uh i'll link michael's website as well as that discount code in the links below or the comments below the video so uh yeah that'll give you 150 dollars off cool so thank, thanks for doing that yeah, of course, man. It's great to it's great to connect with you. Yeah, likewise. Well, Michael, listen, I really appreciate talking to you today. And I, I just um, well, actually the last thing I did have one more question, you know, which is like, what is your what is your vision for the future about this? Like, where do you see all of this going with the, the benefits of cold water immersion becoming, I guess, more well known? Um, how do you see this could be impacting, you know, health and longevity and our culture over the, the long haul? Yeah, I mean, I, I almost get goosebumps with you asking me that question. I mean, we're, our fingers kind of on the pulse of this thing right now with how many people are reaching out, interested in, in cold therapy and having run a cryotherapy center, I, I can see how many people it can help. Um, it's just an incredible modality. We want it to be as common as coffee. Um, and we see that happening and we want to be a part of that. And however we, you know, however we can help spread this thing and educate people and get them to try it, get over that you know, that hump to, to just try cold plunging a few times. The, uh, the benefits are just so vast and um, something you can do for your whole life and, and lower inflammation levels, um, help people live longer, happier lives. That's right. That's awesome. And, I, and that actually brings up a follow-up question around that. Since you have actually run both the cryotherapy chambers, which if uh, someone isn't familiar with that, it's the big tube and it fills up the air with, with nitrogen. Uh, which is like negative 240 or so below zero Fahrenheit. Uh, what is the difference between that oxygen cryo chair, the air nitrogen cryo chamber and the cold water immersion? Yeah, I mean, both are, are cold shock response. So you're going to get the exact same benefit. Um, 
I spoke to a woman earlier today who was buying one for her son's cryo facility. And she's like, I'm not getting in that cold water. I'm a cryo person. You know, some people don't like that, the pain, the sort of intensity of the, the cold water. And so cryo is great. You know, you don't have to get wet three minutes in and out and um, kind of dance around, listen to a song. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, but it's, it's not really doable for a home setup. Um, nitrogen is a total pain. It's, it, it's, it's just not, it's not doable. Um, so the cold water is something everyone can have access to, uh, on a daily basis. Um, it's just going to be a lot more intense. You know, it, it actually adds a kind of mental component of forcing yourself to get in and stay in and calm your breathing. Um, so yeah, that, that would be the main difference. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, Michael, hey, thank you again so much for uh, having this chat with us. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, connecting with you more and seeing how this grows and expands. And I wish you guys just the awesome amount of success in being able to continue, you know, your mission of helping people be happier and healthier and uh, getting your, your product out there. And I hope your business just goes, goes through the roof. Thanks so much, man. It's great to chat with you. All right. Likewise, Michael. You guys take care. You too. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye.